just like the actually loaded members, the statically indeterminate torque loaded members also deal with situations when you have more unknowns than the available equilibrium equations. Therefore, you are not able to solve for the unknowns based on equilibrium alone. You need to write compatibility condition to provide more equations. You should write different compatibility conditions for different situations through your observations and judgment. In this video, I will discuss two common examples. In this example, this composite shaft is made of two solid circular shafts with different geometric and material properties. And it is subjected to a concentrated torque, one kilonewton meter at point B, as well as a distributed torque that ranges from point C to point D. And we need to determine the support reactions at the fixed supports point A and point D. So let's first write the equilibrium conditions. We have done this many times now. We start with the free body diagram of this shaft. And in order to write our equilibrium equation, we need to set up the coordinate. Therefore, I set up my x-axis to be along this direction. Therefore, point A corresponds to when x equals to 0, point B corresponds to when x equals to 0 0.6 meter, and so far and so forth. Point D corresponds to when x equals to the total length of this shaft, which is 2.4 meters. Now, with the x-axis set up, I can draw my unknown torque reactions at the fixed supports point A and point D. And as you can see, again, I draw both of them to be counterclockwise about the x-axis, which is positive torque according to the sign convention for torques. Between point C and D, we have this distributed torque loading that has a linear load intensity that varies from 12 kilonewton meter per meter at point C to zero at point D. And we need to find the resultant torque of this distributed loading. For that, I'm going to write the load intensity as a function of X. So this blue line represents the load intensity function and it is negative because as you can see, the torque is clockwise about the x-axis. And based on our knowledge of writing linear equation, we can write Tx to be 10x minus 24 kilonewton meter per meter, which I can use to integrate later to find the result in the torque. You might argue at this point, there's an easier way to find the result in torque by simply finding the area of the triangle. That is true. However, we still need this load intensity function for our later inner torque analysis. Therefore, it doesn't hurt to write it out here. And now we are ready to write our equilibrium condition. And since there's no force acting on this shaft, we cannot write any force equilibrium equations. Therefore, the only equation we can write is the resultant moment about the x-axis equals to zero. And that equals to Ta, which is the unknown torque reaction at the fixed support point A, minus one, which is the one kilonewton meter torque applied at a point B, plus the integration term, which is the resultant torque of the distributed load from point C to point D. Notice that it is integrated from point C, which is when x equals to 1.2 meter, to point D, which is when x equals to 2.4 meter. And then lastly, add TD, which is again the unknown torque reaction at point D. So based on this, we can write the equation that TA plus TD equals to 8.2 kilonewton meter. And this is the only equation we can write, but we have two unknowns, TA and TD. Therefore, based on equilibrium alone, we cannot solve this problem. And that's why this is called a statically indeterminate problem and we need to write our compatibility condition. So for the compatibility condition, recognize that this shaft is fixed at both ends, point A and point D. Therefore, the angle of twist of point D relative to point A equals to zero. And that equals to the integration of T over JG from point A to point D from X equals to zero to X equals to the total length of the shaft 2.4 meter. 
you can rewrite this compatibility condition to be the angle of twist of end A relative to end D equals to zero. That is correct as well, but you have to make sure to change the lower and upper limits of your integration. You should integrate from point D to point A instead. So here, J again is the polar moment of inertia, which is a geometric property. G is the modulus of rigidity, which is a material property. And T here, I cannot stress this enough, is the internal torque as a function of location x. And to find that, we need to again use the method of sections that we have done so many times. We're going to section this shaft three times, first time between A and B, then between B and C, and last time between C and D. So the first section, we section the shaft at a random location x between point A and B, exposing the internal torque TAB, again drawn in a counterclockwise direction, which is positive according to sign convention. And we can write the equilibrium equation result in the torque about the x-axis equals to TA plus TAB, and that is a zero. Therefore, TAB is solved as an expression of TA to be negative TA. Next, we section between point B and C at the random location X, exposing the internal torque TBC, again drawn counterclockwise, write the equilibrium equation resultant moment about the x-axis equals to TA minus 1 plus TBC, that equals to 0. From here, we can solve TBC, the internal torque between point B and C, as an expression of TA, which is 1 minus TA. Lastly, we section between C and D at an arbitrary location x exposing the internal torque TCD. We write the equilibrium equation summarizing the torque about the x-axis, make it equal to 0. Here you notice the integration term. The integration of the load intensity from 1.2 to x corresponds to the result in the torque of this part right here from point C, which is when x equals to 1.2, to x, which is where we section this member. Therefore, based on this equation, we can write TCD as an expression of TA, but also, as you can see, it is a function of location x. Just to be organized, we can summarize the internal torque function, T, the radius, and the modulus of rigidity, G, for each segment, A, B, B, C, and C, D, in this table. And now we have all the required information for our compatibility condition. Here we need to do the integration from point A all the way through point D, and we can break this integration into three parts, segment A, B, segment B, C, and then segment CD. And we substitute in all the values. And although it looks complicated, this equation only has one unknown, which is TA. So we can solve TA from this equation to be 5.69 kilonewton meter. And if you recall our equilibrium condition, from here we can solve for TD to be 2.51 kilonewton meter. And that's the answer to this question. And both TA and TD are positive. Therefore, their directions agree with what we originally assumed to be counterclockwise about the x-axis. Let's look at another type of example involving gears. In this example, we have two shafts, AC and DE, with the same radius and the same modulus of rigidity, G. For each shaft, one end is fixed, the other end is connected with a gear, and the two gears are meshing with each other. On shaft AC, there is an applied torque 10 kip foot at point B. And if we assume the two bearings allow free rotation, we need to determine the support reactions at a fixed supports point A and point E. And also we need to determine the angle of twist at point C relative to point A. When trying to solve this problem, some students might write the compatibility condition this way, that the angle of twist of point E relative to point A is zero because they recognize that both ends A and E are fixed. This equation itself, I won't call it incorrect, 
but it definitely will not help you to solve this problem. The reason is very simple. These two shafts do not have the same longitudinal axes. And I will leave it to you to figure out what kind of issues you will have if you approach this way. Therefore, simply avoid this when you are trying to solve this type of problem involving gears. So how should we write the compatibility condition correctly? When the two gears are meshing with each other, they both rotate by a certain angle. These two angles are not the same. However, the path along the gears do have the same length s. This s here can be calculated as an arc on gear D, which equals to the angle of twist of gear D multiplied by its radius. But also it can be calculated as an arc on gear C, which equals to the angle of twist of gear C multiplied by its radius. From this equation, we can tell that the angle of twists of the two gears have an inverse relation with their radius. In this case, the ratio between these two angle of twists equals to 2 over 3. And that is our compatibility condition. For equilibrium equation, at the point of contact, the forces exerted by each gear to the other are action and reaction. In other words, the two forces have the same magnitude F, same line of action, but opposite direction. Therefore, this force F causes a moment of F times 12 inch about gear D. 12 inch is the moment arm, which is also the radius of gear D. And this force F causes a moment of F times 8 inch about the gear C. Again, 8 inch is the radius of the gear, which is also the moment arm of this force and the direction of rotation of these two moments are the same. Based on that, we can start with drawing the free body diagram of the shaft AC, choose our x-axis, draw our unknown torque at the fixed support point A, draw the torque on gear C as we determined earlier, write our equilibrium equation. Notice here the unit is in pound inch and then we can solve TA as an expression of F. And we can do a quick method of sections analysis to determine the internal torques. TAB, that is the internal torque between point A and B, given in expression of F. Then TBC, the internal torque between point B and C, also given in expression of F. Based on this, we can substitute them in to this angle of twist equation to find the angle of twist of point C relative to A, again, given as an expression of F. Then we draw the free body diagram of shaft DE. For this independent free body diagram, we draw a different x-axis. We draw the support reaction at the fixed support point E, and we draw the torque on gear D as we determined earlier. Then we write the equilibrium equation and determine TE to be an expression of F. And then we do a simple method of section analysis and determine the internal torque within shaft DE as an expression of F again. Then substitute that into the angle of twist equation to determine the angle of twist of gear D also as an expression of F. Now we have the two angles both given as expressions of F. Recall the compatibility condition that their ratio is a 2 to 3 ratio. Therefore, based on this equation, we can solve for F to be 3.53 kip. And since earlier we had expressions of the support reactions TA and TE both in the expressions of F, therefore we can solve for TA as well as TE. And these are the answers that we're looking for. And then if we substitute the information into this equation for the angle of twist of point C, we can solve for this angle to be 0.0202 radian. And that completes this problem.